You find it in oranges, kiwis, even vegetables like broccoli, and of course, supplements, vitamin C. It's no stranger to most of us, but how much do we actually know about it? What's the first thing that comes to mind when I say vitamin C? Orange. For me, energy. <laughs> the stuff you put in your drink. Effervescent tablets. And how much vitamin C do you think we need daily? I think we need at least two oranges. 1,000 mg. 1,000 mg? What do you think are the benefits of vitamin C? Skin bright, brightening as well. So it's good to keep the flu away. In this episode of Talking Point, I want to find out just how powerful vitamin C is and are its purported powers really based on science or just hype? Our body can't store or produce vitamin C, which is why we need to replenish it daily in our foods. But why do we even need vitamin C? This is Dr. Soon Su Renee. Many of her patients have been asking her about vitamin C supplements. Vitamin C has many potential benefits in our body. It is a powerful antioxidant. It boosts our immune system. It is important for wound healing and the formation of collagen. With so many benefits, does that make vitamin C popular? I would say um, we do have a lot of patients getting regular supplements. It is readily available over the counter. They have delicious, tasty gummies, chewables, effervescence and tablet. Somehow we have also been told since young that vitamin C helps prevent colds. So can vitamin C really prevent or even cure me of my common cold? There is currently no conclusive scientific evidence that vitamin C can uh, prevent or save you from any complications from the cold. There are small trials and small group of patients that shows that it can actually shorten your duration of cold and the severity of cold. However, large trials are still not there. There's still no conclusive evidence. But even then, it does boost our immunity, right? So our immune system has two types, the innate immune system and the adaptive um, immune system. For example, when you're having an infection, White blood cells, such as neutrophils, will be alerted. So they will move towards the site of infection. White blood cells would then produce reactive oxygen species that kills the organism. So vitamin C is actually needed for all these actions of the white blood cells to be effective in clearing the infection. The reactive oxygen species is also potentially causing damage to surrounding healthy tissues. Vitamin C then works as a counteractive, um, powerful antioxidant to prevent um, healthy cells from getting damaged. Vitamin C is also crucial for wound healing. When there's a wound, collagen, one of the most important connective tissue, is needed to help rebuild damaged skin. Vitamin C helps by stimulating collagen formation, therefore speeding up the healing process. Which is why I have been taking these vitamin C supplements. I do wonder though, how much vitamin C do I really need to ensure I'm getting a good dose? Okay, so I brought something to show you. These are the vitamin C supplements that I take every day. Am I getting enough? For adult male, it's 105 milligrams of vitamin C required per day. Now, if we look at younger children, uh, infants from zero to six months only require 35 milligrams per day. And as they get older, up to six years old, all they need is 50 milligrams per day. You only need 85 milligrams of vitamin C a day. So this tablet contains 500 milligrams of vitamin C. So I'm getting too much? Definitely too much. Now there are special groups of people who require more. These are people who smoke, 
because we know that uh, smokers have lower levels of vitamin C in their body due to the oxidative stress related to smoking. So we recommend a higher levels of vitamin C in their daily intake. Pregnant mothers have a higher requirement of 100 milligrams of vitamin C per day. And how about for the elderly? For the elderly, it follows the general requirement for adult, male and female. There is no special requirements. So, in order to put things into perspective and to, to let you see what you really require in real life, I've prepared some food items to show you. Let's go. Okay, let's have a look. I have a challenge for you. I'm always up for a challenge. <laughs> Can you guess which fruit or vegetable contains the highest amount of vitamin C? Oh. Oh no. Okay, I'm going to go for the most cliché option and I'm going to say the orange. <laughs> you are near but not quite near. Yeah, Fruits and vegetables like... have been arranged in decreasing order of their vitamin C content. Let's start off with okay. our tropical fruit, guava. Mm -hmm. It contains 220 milligrams of vitamin C per 100 grams of guava. So that is more than what you need in a single day. Next up, we have sliced red capsicum. Half a cup of sliced red capsicum contains 180 milligrams of vitamin C. Mm. And moving down, we have one medium kiwi, which contains 160 milligrams of vitamin C. One cup of strawberries contain 100 milligrams of vitamin C. Now, what about the orange looking fruits? For papaya, one wedge of papaya contains 80 milligrams of vitamin C, similar to one medium orange, it's also 80 milligrams Only of vitamin C. Oh, you didn't win! <laughs> okay, okay, how about this one? Now, for uh, one cup of rock melon, it contains 60 milligrams of vitamin C, mm -hmm. and not forgetting our uh, broccoli, half a cup of cooked broccoli contains 60 milligrams of vitamin C. Okay, so some of these you mentioned, for example, the guava, the red capsicum, that's more than 100 mg of vitamin C. So what happens to the excess vitamin C that I consume? So if you take excess vitamin C coming from food or fruit sources, any extra will then be removed in the form of urine because vitamin C is a water-soluble vitamin. It does not get absorbed by the body. Muna, you mentioned earlier that you take vitamin C supplements. Yes. Right, that is excessive dose of vitamin C. So what happens is that every day, you probably have very expensive pee coming out from your body. Oh no, because it just comes out. Yes, you're you going know. through a moment a little bit. Other than that, there are also some um, side effects associated okay. with excessive vitamin C taken over a long period of time. So according to the scientific studies, anything more than 2,000 milligrams a day is considered excessive intake. Some of the side effects could include nausea, diarrhea, and even kidney stones. I have been taking vitamin C supplements for 27 years, and I'm really surprised that I only need 85 mg of vitamin C. And each of my pills right here, these are 500 mg of vitamin C. So it really makes me question the large dosage of these vitamin C supplements if I only require less than half of it. In 2021, market research company Euromonitor reported that sales for vitamin C supplements in Singapore hit over a whopping $31 million, a sharp increase from the year before. Although we can get our vitamin C fix from food, I know many people, myself included, turn to vitamin C supplements. These supplements come in the form of pills. Muna, there's more fish. Oh. Ah, effervescent tablets. Gummies. <laughs> Chewables. And what? 
Mouth spray? Really? A quick look at these vitamin C supplements and you'd notice dosage that differs greatly. From 250 mg, 500 mg, and even 1,000 mg. That's 10 times the amount of vitamin C I need daily. So I'm quite curious, why such a large dosage of vitamin C for the supplements? I reached out to a few companies and Cordell's brand manager, Sean Lim, who is also a nutritionist, agreed to meet me. The company has been selling supplements for more than 70 years. So there's two important elements when you talk about uh, ingesting of vitamin C. Number one, absorption. And second one will be retention of vitamin C in the body. Uh, so it's not just popping in pills or taking a fruit like oranges and you get the vitamin C. There's a study shown that actually when you take um, 30 milligrams to 180 milligrams, you absorb about 70 to 90% of vitamin C. Um, but the moment you increase to 500 or even 1000, you will actually absorb only 50%. So the other 50% will be lost. What is the best form then to take vitamin C? The best form doesn't depend on delivery format, whether capsules, tablets or effervescent, but rather the formula. A regular vitamin C supplements containing ascorbic acid will actually stay in the body for two to eight hours. Vitamin C supplements containing metabolites such as L-ascorbic, calcium ascorbate, and also uh, calcium ascorbate teronate will be able to actually retain in the body up to 24 hours, three times longer than a regular vitamin C supplements containing ascorbic acid. And is there a best time to take my vitamin C supplements? Well, there isn't a best time. However, if you do take caffeine, like caffeinated drinks in the morning, like coffee or tea, basically vitamin C and caffeine uh, competes for absorption. So take note when you are taking vitamin C. There are a few things that could rob our body of vitamin C. Smoking, caffeine, pollutants. So, I will continue to take my vitamin C supplements, but I'll be more mindful about the type of vitamin C I choose. It isn't just vitamin C supplements that has seen a surge in interest. In recent years, this hero ingredient has found its way into most skincare strategies. Skincare infused with vitamin C are easily found in stores here. Promising to give skin a more radiant and brighter look. And even help with wrinkles. So I've tried a lot of skincare products with vitamin C and I've seen the difference it made with my skin. Nazir Taufik swears by the brightening powers of vitamin C. So much so that he started his own skincare product line featuring vitamin C, of course. This was two years back, but between this photo, this is around four or five months. Okay. In, yeah, this was credits to you know using vitamin C. So handsome! <laughs> what a beautiful picture this one. Thank you. <laughs> It was really a huge difference, especially in brightening and my hyperpigmentation marks from acne as well. Vitamin C actually can be found in a lot of skincare products, which includes cleansers, serums, toners, essences, sheet masks even. Okay, and yeah. that is a lot. Do you mm. use all of them? Right now, I'm using more of this one because this has thinner texture. And usually, I don't apply it directly on my face because since this is a dropper situation, mm -hmm. I do my palm. Mm -hmm. Just probably like three drops okay. for the whole face. If we just do this, I'm just like, like that. So I would do this during the day because vitamin C, it has antioxidant properties. So how much have you spent on vitamin C products? So to this day, I would say more than $300 on vitamin C products. Some of these vitamin C products actually don't come cheap at all. Mm. As you can see over here, this one and this one is more of the high-end, high range. I wonder if the result for Nazir is the exception rather than the norm. If you use vitamin C skincare products, 
you possibly can achieve something like this, but... And I discover a potentially more powerful use for vitamin C. So your clinical trial shows that vitamin C can help with diabetes. How? I'm bringing Nazir's before and after pictures to Professor Stephen Theng, a dermatologist with over 11 years of experience. So these are before and after photos of Nazir's skin. This is two years ago. Mm -hmm. This one is just a few months after the first photo. And this is his skin currently. So do you think people can expect the same results when they use skincare products with vitamin C? Certainly the post-acne scarring seems to have lightened significantly. Mm. Generally, if you just use pure vitamin C, um, its lightening effect is not as active. So in essence, vitamin C uh, does help in lightening the skin when it's added on to another active ingredient. By itself, it doesn't lighten hyperpigmentation as well. And generally, you find it in cosmetic products with vitamin C, they probably add in vitamin E and other lightening creams to try to lighten the scars that we see down here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Since you mentioned that vitamin C isn't the main agent for lightening, then what is vitamin C's role in skincare products? Vitamin C has got multiple roles. The first and most important of all is its antioxidant effect. Our skin is exposed to UV, to pollution, which causes an increase in oxidative stress, like free radicals in the skin. So vitamin C will mop it out and that's how it enforces its anti-aging and, and lightening effect. The second mechanism is uh, vitamin C. It does cause the collagen to regenerate a bit so that uh, you now have got a bit more of a youthful skin. But then it's, you need to ensure that the product that you buy, the, the formulation is good enough to bring vitamin C all the way down to the dermis. So, how can we decide what is a good vitamin C skincare product? Generally, it is tough because you need to ensure that the vitamin C is stabilised. And secondly, that the formulation will enable the vitamin C to penetrate the skin. And nowhere in the packaging will tell you whether the vitamin C is stabilised. And nowhere will it tell you uh, whether the penetration is good enough. And so, if that's the case, then what are the kind of results I should be seeing to tell if that product is effective for my skin? Then you look for the efficacy of whatever your concern is. If your concern is the dark spots or pigmentation, it generally takes about eight weeks to ten weeks to see any lightening effects. Can I just take vitamin C supplements for my skin? Generally, when you take vitamin C supplements, they will end up circulating around your body to the liver, to the blood, and very, very little of the vitamin C they concentrate in the skin. So I would say topical vitamin C will work very much better than oral vitamin C because when you apply topical vitamin C, you actually put vitamin C at the skin where you want it to work. Vitamin C is a vital nutrient for our health and our skin. And scientists around the world believe that there is more potential to be unlocked from this powerhouse. Everything from cancer treatment to diabetes management. Professor Glenn Wadley from Australia's Deakin University has spent over a decade studying how vitamin C could help diabetics. So your clinical trial shows that vitamin C can help with diabetes. How? So we had around 30 people with type 2 diabetes. They took vitamin C, uh, a gram a day, alongside all the medications that they were normally on. After four months of the vitamin C, we measured how well they were handling blood glucose levels and the spikes in blood glucose levels they get after eating standard meals. What we found was that the spikes in blood glucose were reduced by about 35%. Okay, it's still a pretty small-scale study. Do you believe in the potential of vitamin C in treating diabetics? We really do need more larger-scale clinical trials. But it's certainly not a cure for type 2 diabetes. None of the treatments available currently cure type 2 diabetes. 
What most of them do is try to uh, minimise the high blood sugar levels that people with type 2 diabetes have. I believe it's vitamin C is potentially um, of, of great benefit for people with type 2 diabetes. It's a way to minimise that progressive worsening of the disease. And that's important because what we often find with people with type 2 diabetes, as they get older and they have diabetes for longer, often it's much harder to um, maintain their blood sugar levels to an acceptable level. That often requires them to go on higher doses of medication. So if we can uh, slow down or, or even stop uh, the, the worsening of blood sugar levels uh, in people with type 2 diabetes, we could um, minimise or delay the onset of all serious complications, uh, such as the development of blindness, kidney disease, um, amputations from, from foot ulcers, and also the damage it does to, to the heart and circulation. The importance of vitamin C was first noted by sailors who, on their long voyages, didn't have access to fruits and vegetables. They bled from their gums and under their skin. It was in the 1930s that it was discovered to be due to the lack of vitamin C. Since then, there's been endless studies on how important this hero ingredient is. And now, it seems it could potentially be the wonder drug of the future. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, oh.